Hi, and welcome to today's lesson. What we're going to do is trace out this fashion design sketch, and we're going to use Affinity Designer to do that, and we're going to add some nice fabric pattern to this design. So let's jump in, and I'll show you how we can do that. All right, so the first thing I'll do is to just open up Affinity Designer and we have this default screen. So let's go ahead and just create a new workspace. I'll just set this to uh, 1920 by 1080 in case you're not using this, or let's just set it to a normal default size. So I'll set this to A4 and make sure it's in portrait view and I'll click create. This will create a nice new handy project. Next, let's go ahead and create a background. So I'll click here on the rectangular tool and I'll go over here and left click and hold and I'll drag a nice selection like so and just drop it right here. So what I also like to do is to just make this slightly cool. So I'll just select any cool value and just push this tone right here so I can have this nice colored paper. Again, if you want to see what value I'm using, I'll go ahead and select the sliders and I'm using a hex value. Let's see, let's see RGB hex. So the hex value is D0F4DD. That's D0F4DD and we're good. So next let's place our image or our sketch. I'll use the place image tool. It's just right here. I'll click on it and it's going to look for a position where I have saved that sketch. So I'll go ahead and jump into our project folder where we have our project. It's right here and it's in our lesson two pattern sketch sketches and i'll bring in the falcon sketch and just place this right here and i'll just zoom in just zoom in again just zoom in and see our sketch so our sketch is going to be just placed on this side and i'll just or we can even sketch on top of it that's totally fine and what we're concerned about is this fabric so first let's uh, divide this into two so that we can always kind of like um, flip this design when we're done. So I'll press P to jump to the pen tool. You can actually see the pen tool here. Right now there's no fill and stroke. So I'll just click my stroke and I'll click this solid black and I'll just test the pen tool by just dropping out a few shapes. I think this is a good shape so with a size. Let's go ahead and increase this. Let's set this to 0.5. I think 0.5 is not a bad size for this. So I like this. So I could just press delete to delete that. So I'll set my pen to 0.5. That's going to be the width of this pen. So here I'm going to start at the, this is the center front position, but this fabric is a bit off center. So I'll just start from this point. And what I'll do is to click on snapping. And first I'll start by creating a polygonal shape. And then from there, I'll smooth out those edges. So I'll click here, click here, I'm not really worried about you know how smooth it is. I'll just go ahead and click here, click here, click down. Let's go down to the skirt side. So I'll go over here to the hip side and just click one down here, click here, click this cut out section. And I think I'll leave it as that. So if we wanted to create, uh, we can always undo. If we wanted to create half of this, what we'll do is to just stop right here. Right, so we have that. I'll just go ahead and select the node tool, click on this edge and hold shift just to snap it to this grid line I drew right here. So what we can do next is go over here to this curve and press control J and let's go to the curve underneath, switch over to our move tool, which is V and we'll click on this flip horizontal. I'll hold shift, left click and drag just so I can just have this right here. So we can actually see we have our design and what we can do is to select these two and I'll press control G and I'll just call this our front like so. So that's going to be the front of our uh, fabric. So what I want to do right now is to create some of these flails like here for the fabric. We can also use the pen tool to do that. So I'll go over here and select and create this simple triangular shape and close out this shape. So we're done with the first one. Let's create another one. So I'll still holding the, uh, using the pen tool. I'll go over to this edge, click, 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 and then close out the shape. We can zoom in and switch over to the move tool just to drag this and place it in this position or any other position we want. If we want to rotate this object, we can always select here but the rotation point is at the center. So what we can do is uh, we can always change that, but we're not going to be working with that uh, origin point. But in case you want to here, 
I'll click on enable transform origin. This is the transform origin, this blue icon that came up. And I want to set the transform origin to this point right here. So if I rotate, it's going to be rotating from this origin. I don't want that. So I'll set the origin to this point. So again, I'll click on the transform origin, drag it to this point right here so that I can rotate this shape in this direction if I, in case I want to change it. So next, let's add the next set of flails. So I'll just do this, do this, do this, and do this as well. Just add some of that as well. So next, we can actually see we have some of these fills here as well. So what we'll do is just click over here and we'll start from this edge actually. So I'll just click here like so, click. And just to create some of those folds we have right here on the object, I'll click, click, click. I can even click out of it. And let's just click here just to close that shape. Don't worry, we're gonna have this being overlapped. So it's gonna be overlapping underneath this shape right here. So what else can we add? Let's look at the arms right here. So we have a little arm. So let's go ahead and create the arm. So click here and just follow along these folds like so for the hand pattern. And we'll just close this right here. And we can see we have some nice fabric around this. So we'll click on this arm and just close this arm like so. So next, what we're going to do is to see how we can create. So even here, let's go ahead and create this nice cut out for the skirt, like so. And we can zoom in and go back to our node selection tool, click and drag this guy right here. So next, let's add the curves. So adding the curves is as simple as clicking on the shape. So let's go ahead and select the skirt. I believe we're on the skirt, this one. And let's switch over our tools. Just zoom out a little bit just to get the overall design. So let's open up the group. If we turn this off, we can actually see what group we're working with. So let's open up this group and let's select the skirt like so. We can double click. And what we can do is just start adding some organic uh, forms to this. So like this edge, we'll just drag it a little bit and then push this edge here and make this a little concave. And let's also select this edge and kind of like push this edge like so, just a little bit. So let's go over the hip section. We'll click on this to convert this to a curve. So each time you click on any of those sections and select this and go over here to the convert to smooth curve. And let's make that smooth. Let's go over here and just drag this section so if you click on it, double click on it, you're going to add a point. That's not what we want. So we just want to hover till we see this kind of like a line, like so. So I'll hold control to zoom out and we can just drag this to give it a nice uh, curvy shape. Let's do the same for these flails. So let's double click on this and let's just add a nice little curve right here. And let's make this curvy and I accidentally added a curve there. So I'll just use Control Z to undo. And let's just make this slightly organic like so. So I'll just drag this over here, select this and left click and just drag this over here like that. So let's go ahead and just fill in the shape. So for the arms, let's just do that right here. I'll just drag the, select the arms, left click and drag here. And I'll left click and drag at this point right here. So what I'm going to do is just fill up this shape. So I'll go over here, select the move tool. And for the front, I'll go to the fill and let's select a color. So I'll just select this bright red like so, super bright. And what we can actually do is to see how our objects are being arranged because some objects are above some objects and some objects are below some objects. And this is why I like using the um, the color wheel, like this one here, the sliders, sorry. So with the sliders, I can just drag this slider to make this kind of like a uh, tone and it can actually mix some of these colors together. So that's why I like using the slider. So let's just move on and see what we're doing here. So we can't see some of these fabrics because they're behind, right? So this is our group. So let's just drag this and put it back in here. And with this selected, let's see if we can have another value for it. So let's select this one 
select the front and hide it and for this let's add a nice fill by just dragging a fill and let's see what's happening right here so if I open this we can't see this underneath so let's drag our curve and place it on top the same thing with our next curve on top like so and for this curve if we select this curve and we want it to use this color so this is the curve we selected but we want it to use this curves color so just select this curve and then pick the eyedropper tool and then pick this color so that this curve will have this color as well so that's a that's an awesome way of doing it so let's go ahead and select this shape this one by double clicking and uh, let's use the eyedropper tool and select this color and now we can see it's uh, sitting on top so let's just drag this up out of the uh, base fabric and we can see what we're working with right now so let's look at the arm shape which is this one right here and let's go ahead and fill this with a color so I'll select this tool and for the fill let's just drag in this fill and then make it into this color and just kind of like make it this color tone so I'm just uh, randomly selecting colors right here so next for the wrists let's uh, we can make this slightly organic so I'll select the node tool and just select these few edges and just push them and bump them like so like that just a little bit not too much just like that and what I'll do is to select a light value for the fill. All right. So uh, we haven't actually sketched the arm. We could just quickly do that so that we have an idea how the arm is going to look like. So let's just go ahead and click the pen tool. And I'll just create a nice curvy feminine kind of like shape right here for the arm. And that's it. That's our little arm. And we can fill this with a warm tone like so and we'll put this behind so to put a shape behind we'll just drag this and put it underneath like so so it's going to be behind this layer right here all right so we can we actually noticed on our skirt if we select our skirt we're just selecting the first half if we select this and hide it so let's hide this one and hide this one we can actually see something is hiding behind this guy right here so what we want to do is to place this above these two so I'll click and drag this so it's above so if I open this these two and I go to my fill and start just dragging in a fill color we can actually see this shape right here but we need to arrange this so to do that let's go back to our node tool and let's select this shape and just click this edge and just drag it to place it right here and let's drag this edge and just kind of like make this lower we can even snap it to this top edge here it doesn't matter and what we can do is just try to start making this slightly organic like so like that and you can see how by just using the basic tools you're beginning to get some of that our pattern and the design you're seeing on this object it's just a quick rough sketch and a rough way to do this so you can actually uh, brainstorm your ideas and see how you want this object to kind of like be and stay so if we want we can select if you wanted to have this color so select the eyedropper tool and click on this and this fill would have this color now sometimes the fill might be working against you we might not really, really want this fill so to get rid of the fill select the shape and go to the stroke sorry and click on this so select this go stroke say no stroke select this go to the stroke say no stroke like so so you might actually want to prefer having your designs looking like this without the stroke and we can always move these edges and these points just to uh, kind of like make them interesting so what i'm going to do is to group these three press ctrl g and let's press ctrl j to duplicate the group so with the group selected let's select the move tool let's flip the group let's zoom out and hold down shift and left click and just drag this design and just place this pattern right here you can place it in any position you want but i'll just place it right here and make sure it slightly aligns so let's just place this whoops i'm actually selecting the wrong object i want to select this second group and drag it here 
and just place it here so that it aligns with this uh, uh, group right here. So what I also want to do with this carrot is just to kind of like expand this. So I'll switch, select the node tool and kind of like just expand this. Now we have this here, we don't need it. So let's delete this shape and just drag this edge right here. I believe we also have another edge here. So we could just uh, delete this. Okay, we're making it worse <laughs> than it's supposed to be. So I'll just leave it at that. And what we can do is to go over here and select these busy handles and begin to just move them around to place the skirt in position. So again, for the arms, if we want to duplicate the arm, let's click on this, press Ctrl J, we've duplicated that, head over to the transform tool, flip this, hold on shift and just drag this to the right. And let's do the same, Ctrl J to duplicate this. So we select it, hold on shift, drag it, and we need to flip, flip like so. And we can also flip the arms. So sometimes if you're finding it difficult to move things, just turn off the snapping by clicking on this magnet icon. And we'll just drop this right here and we'll take the arm. You can hold control and just drag out another arm. It's not flipped. So let's just flip this and that does that. So with control, you can easily flip a uh, design and just kind of like place it and see how it's uh, working. So with this, uh, let's just go ahead and look at this. So what we can also do is to make sure we group things very well. So for instance, the arm, if we want to group the arms, let's uh, start with the shirt. So I'll click on this curve, hold control and click on this curve. If I turn them off, we can see that's what's controlling our shirt. So I'll just press control G and I'll call them uh, top, left and right, just to name your layers properly. And we have our cuffs, so I'll click on the first one, hold control and click on the second one, press control G, and I'll call this uh, cuffs, like so. So what that means is we can deselect two of them, like so, and let's just do the uh, wrists. So I'll do control G and group the wrists, and I'll call that uh, wrists. And again, what we can do is to, uh, let's group the uh, arms. So I'll do control G to group them together. And I'll just say arms. Now the unique and cool thing is we can always change the color of content we have in an entire group. That's really interesting. So we can always uh, do that and make those changes as well. So I kind of like noticed how arms are super short, right? If you kind of like look at this, because they're supposed to be around this edge ridge around the uh, thighs, it makes it more interesting. So what we can do is to get rid of this. Or yeah, we can open the wrists and hold shift and just drag the wrists down here because we want the wrists to be in this location. And this actually gives me an idea of this design. We can have a second cuffs. So I hold control and drag this second cuffs like so. And then what we can do is to add another uh, pen shape. So I'll click the pen tool and I'll just create a nice shape like this. I just need to create one. And with that shape selected, I'll click on the eyedropper tool and then click on this color, which will apply the fill automatically. Now this is above our arms. So what I'll do is just click and just drag this down like so. And it doesn't have a, uh, a fill around it. So we can go ahead and add that fill. So let's select this tool go to the stroke rather sorry the stroke. And let's click on the black stroke and let's get back here and just kind of like slightly uh, push this. So I'll just double click on this to make it active and I'll just drag this edge like so. And just push this edge as so for the arm. So we can see we have a nice kind of like tall, slender, cute looking uh, design. And which means we might need to pull the skirt, but let's quickly do the other arm. So I'll just hold control with the move tool selected, I'll hold control and drag this over here, just like that. I think it's super nice. We didn't even need to flip this. I'll just drag this here and let's pull this, pull this up a little bit by dragging these handles. And we can see she has a weird arm, but that's okay. So this is just a simple way to look at this. So let's see how we can work on the skirt. So it's on our top. So let's double click on this. And since we have half of these two, 
uh, we can group this so let's click on this and click on this press ctrl G and let's just say uh, top top I'll press the return key and what I want to do is to just expand this bottom section so I'll use the node select tool I'll click on this and I'll just select this side and just drag this down over here like so let's click on this as well select these two sides and let's just drag this down as well and we can see we have some kind of like artifacting when we start the lessons on how we can merge shapes together we can merge those shapes and if I want this to have a nice angle I'll click on this Bezier handles and hold alt just like snap this towards the edge like so again something I don't really need this edge so uh, something tells me I should delete it but I'll just leave it alone but it's not necessary to have that edge again I can use alt and just drag this busy handles just to make this much more pronounced and curvy like so so with this we can actually see that we have a uh, kind of like basic style for our pattern we can see we created some of these flails we created the edges and we, I said we can actually change these colors. For instance, if we wanted to make this color brighter, because we've actually grouped the first set of curves and the second set of curves, what we can do is to add a adjustment and we can do things like, uh, let's recolor and we can apply any color we want to that group. And it's going to affect only the contents we have in that group. I'm going to desaturate this like so. So that's how you can change the color. And because you've grouped it, you're only affecting the color of that group. And you can always change it as well. So uh, that's going to bring us to the end of this. It was a very quick one. Basically, it's just showing you a nice style and how you can have this style. And the reason why this is important is because you can actually go online and look for a nice color palette and then try to apply that color palette on this on your design and say hey I'm actually using these colors for this specific design and you can always change your colors then you can look for a fabric to actually place that fabric on this for instance if I wanted to change the color of this group I'll just go over here click on recolor and I setting it to red but I just want this to be slightly uh, and the saturation is too high so I'll just drag down the saturation and just let's try to make this kind of like cool like so let's pump up our saturation a little bit and let's we're actually seeing how this is going to look and so now that we've colored this if we wanted to change the color of this group we can use the eyedropper tool and select this color and then this group changes to this color so i hope you learned something basically you could have your little uh, sketch and let's group everything together so we can change uh, have everything organized so i'll click on this and go over here and okay one last thing before we go i actually have a layer right here that shows me the uh, triangle i wanted to use to cut out this skirt so to do that let's go ahead and select this top we actually see we've selected the top that has this blouse and what i can do is to click this layer and set this layer to erase so once this is erased what i can do is to just clip it with this guy right here like so let's go ahead and see that and let's set this here as well and let's try to move this around and just place this right here on this guy I believe it should be here so uh, we'll actually look at that in our next tutorial but I just basically wanted to show you a quick way you can create uh, cuts on objects. Let me just show you that real quick before we uh, wrap things up. So I'll click here, hold shift and click on the group, press control G. And we'll just call this our dress. Like so, so you can turn this off and see the dress. Turn this back on and see what we, the edits we made and changes we made on our design like so and we remember it, everything is non-destructive we can always go back and make changes to this and like I said I'm just quickly going to show you how you can create a cut so for instance I have a square and I want to 
create a cut with a circle in the center. So basically on the circle, I'm going to set this layer to erase and you can actually see this is a hole already. So we've just quickly created a hole and we can just move around and see that it's just chipped this edge and we can group them together like so. I'll just control G and say uh, slice. So basically with that, we can add the slice on the skirt. Let's go ahead and look for it. So this is our front, like so, our front group. We can even drag in this, our ellipse and mask that to the front group. And if we drag our ellipse right here, we can see our ellipse is chipping out this uh, section right here, but we don't want it to chip it out like that. We want it to chip it like a triangle. So let's click convert to curves. Since this is a curve now, what we can do is to get rid of one of these edges. So I'll select this and press delete. And now what I can do is just drag this shape to the looks like a nice triangle. And for this edge, I'm going to convert this to a sharp edge. And with that, we can actually see we've created a nice cutout for our skirt. And we've actually not destroyed our skirt. We haven't destroyed anything. We can just turn this off. And you can see that, hey, we actually have this nice cut around this edge. And we can just even add another one. So with this selected, I'll just call this a uh, cut. So I can press Control J to create another one. And I can create another cut right here. And you can actually see we have a variation of this cut. So we have the skirt that has these two cuts. We can, you know, start going crazy and adding another one and placing that one over here and making it super thin and making it very long. And then what we can also do is to go over here and then make this edge kind of like curvy. So just see that we have a nice cut out for a zipper and just place it right there. So these are all design variations you can have. This saves you from, you know, cutting out your skirt in real life and trying experiments. You just experiment and see how your fabric is going to look. And let's not forget, you can always change the color of your stroke. So for instance, if I want this guy, I go to the stroke, you can always change the stroke color to a different color. It doesn't have to be black. You can set it to any color you want, but I'll just set it back to the default black color. So thank you very much for watching guys. And I'll see you in the next design quick tip. And hopefully you can use this to start creating some very nice variations to your styling. So uh, see you guys soon. And please don't forget to like and subscribe on the channel. Peace.